Hello and welcome to another episode of Full Court Finance here at Zacks. I'm your host, Ben Rains. And today we're taking a look at which one of these big tech stocks might be a better buy before earnings, and that is Shopify and Amazon. But before we get into everything, I want to say remember to subscribe and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcast, and make sure to check out our new zacks.com slash promo page for a look in some of our services, portfolios, and more. So before we jump into Shopify and Amazon, as always, I like to start with a broader market overview, and then we'll do some uh, look at the S&P 500 earnings picture to give us a better sense of what's going on with Shopify and Amazon. So the NASDAQ, the S&P, and the Dow all hit fresh records last Friday and touched new highs briefly Monday morning, even though stocks were kind of uh, going up and down early in trading on Monday morning. So uh, this is after the market ripped higher. So now for four straight days of gains, they reclaim new highs pretty quickly, almost as quickly as they fell. So after last Monday's huge decline capped nearly a week of selling, all three indexes uh, have once again hit new highs after they were there just back on July 12th. So the bulls once again appear to be back in the driver's seat. So you saw the Delta coronavirus variant worries and economic slowdown fears were blamed uh, mostly for the market's dive. Those same things are still there, and sometimes people are drawing larger conclusions and paint broader uh, base concerns when simple profit taking and healthy recalibrations uh, might do just fine. So corrections and sell offs are a vital part of well functioning markets. And given some of these broader worries, as we touch on, as well as rising prices, they haven't gone away. So maybe profit taking was really that that main culprit for last week's sell off since we also saw that ultra fast rebound already. Uh, that strong run dating back to mid March pushed some technology ETFs like QQQ to some overheated technical levels, and this is when we saw some of the selling. And once again, we're already back up to those new highs, and some technical levels are overheated again. So you could still see Wall Street take a chance uh, for Q2 earnings season to be more reason to keep selling, taking profits off the table, even though we've seen some pretty impressive results and we're likely to see more impressive results and strong guidance continue going through. So with that said, with stocks back up at highs, treasury yields are back down uh, to lower levels than they were uh, a couple months ago. And even when the Fed starts to eventually raise rates, Wall Street likely will be chasing returns and equities for a very long time, given the current rock bottom levels. And with these low yields, it makes big tech stocks and growth names look even more appealing. And with this in mind, we have some of the biggest tech players in the world reporting their earnings this week. So this includes Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Facebook. We also have Amazon as well, which we're talking about today, as well as Shopify, Tesla, and countless other huge companies all set the report this week. So with that in mind, we're going to take a look at quickly the broader earnings picture. And we should note that these five companies, so we mentioned Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Facebook, and Amazon. Those five companies now account for a combined 23% of the total market capitalization of the S&P 500 index, second only to the technology sector as a whole with uh, the weight of its index at, or with tech accounting for about 33%. Uh, so this puts it above all the other 15 sectors, including finance. So those five tech stocks really do uh, dominate the market and control a big part of earnings picture as well as the top line growth picture as well. So with that in mind, the current Zach's estimates are calling for S&P 500 earnings to climb about 75%, but we expect these estimates could get up to 80% from that year ago or the easy to compare period last year, but also mark real growth from the pre-COVID levels in 2019. And we're calling for 20% revenue growth and then continued growth in the coming quarters as well. So overall, we're calling for over 30% earnings growth on about 11.2% higher growth for 2021. And then we're calling for another 10% earnings growth next year, 11% in 2023 on about 7% revenue growth in 2022 and 5% revenue growth in 2023. So some continued impressive growth both this year, next year, and in 2023 helps set up a a continued bullish picture despite some of the the broader worries we've seen. And as we mentioned, even when the Fed starts to raise rates, those interest rates will likely remain low enough that there's really no alternative to 
investing in stocks. So with that in mind, we're going to take a look at both Shopify and Amazon. And we're going to start with Shopify since Shopify reports its results before Amazon. And for those of you who don't know, Shopify trades under the ticker SHOP with S-H-O-P. And its Q2 results are due out before the market opens on Wednesday, July 28th. So this Wednesday morning before the opening bell. So Shopify helps companies adapt to the future of retail by building, maintaining, and helping grow their e-commerce presence. The firm boasts that it powers over 1.7 million businesses in about 175 countries around the world. So Shopify makes money from recurring subscription fees and add-ons. They offer different tiers with some aimed at entrepreneurs and small and medium-sized business businesses with others focused on high volume merchants and large businesses. The Canadian company's most basic package starts at around uh, $29 a month for sellers, and there's transaction fees that start at around 3% per transaction. Shop also has a point of sale products and software that have gained momentum and compete against the likes of offerings from Square and others. Uh, Shopify is also partnered with industry heavyweights, including Walmart and Facebook, uh, and all of this will help it become uh, an even bigger player in this Amazon age. And the pandemic simply cemented the need for most companies in an array of fields to thrive online going forward. Uh, and most importantly, Shopify was far from a one-hit COVID wonder. For instance, Shopify uh, stock had surged from under $30 back in 2016 to over $500 uh, well before the coronavirus crash. So it was gaining huge momentum well before everyone had to buy everything online for an extended period of time. Shopify's sales growth supported that move. So 2019's nearly 50% revenue growth actually was its slowest since it went public back in 2015. The company's 2020 revenue then skyrocketed about uh, 86% from $1.6 billion all the way up to $2.9 billion. And then most recently, its adjusted Q1 earnings soared from $0.19 cents per share all the way up to $2.01 per share on 110% higher revenue. So some big growth still in Q1. Uh, analysts then upped their estimates after that impressive Q1 showing, with some coming in well above uh, current consensus figures in the last seven days. This means Shopify uh, and its history of quarterly earnings beats could be set to do that again later this week. So Zach's estimates call for its full year 2021 revenue to jump another 50% from $2.9 billion all the way up to $4.4 billion, with 2022 set to surge another 32% higher, all the way up to $5.8 billion. So some continued impressive growth for Shopify with the subscription model helping set up consistent uh, revenue streams. So meanwhile, it's adjusted earnings are projected to climb about 11% this year and then 13% next year. And we should note that Shopify has been a standout, obviously, on Wall Street for a very long time. The stock, as we mentioned, has gone on a massive run. Its current levels are sitting at about $1,600 a share. Luckily, for those who might have missed out on some of the big run, uh, the stock has cooled down a bit from its insane run over the last several years. It's up about 60% in the last 12 months. This lags behind Target and others, uh, as we should note. With lots of these stocks, with the market back up at new highs, it has regained momentum along with some other pandemic winners. It's up about 50% since mid-May in shop sitting right around its new July records. And it's approaching overbought RSI levels of 70. At the moment, it's sitting at about 66. We should note that the stock slipped about 2.3% on Monday. It's trading at around $1,606 per share, so around that $1,600 level. Uh, Shopify currently lands a Zach's rank number one strong buy in 15 of the 26 brokerage recommendations that Zach's has are also strong buys with only one sell. So Wall Street remains really high in the stock overall. Uh, the stock does trade at a premium compared to its industry, but at about 36.5 times forward earnings, it's trading about 25% below its year-long highs and right at its median. There could be some near-term selling pressure given Shopify's in the market's huge run, as we mentioned. Maybe Wall Street continues to take some profits off the table, but long-term investors might want to consider adding Shopify stock given its ability to thrive in this booming growth sector. And we should note that e-commerce is far from its peak considering that it only accounted for about 14% of total U.S. retail sales in the first quarter, down from what was a record of 16% in 
in the second quarter of 2020. So the height of the pandemic. So still plenty of room to grow. And e-commerce is only accounting for about 14% of overall US retail sales. And now we're gonna move on to Amazon, uh, which trades in the ticker AMZN, and they report their results for Q2 uh, after the market closes on Thursday, July 29th. So this upcoming Thursday, as most of us know, the Seattle giant was built for that coronavirus environment and it is ready to thrive uh, for years to come for all of the same e-commerce reasons at Shopify. And it's also well more diversified compared to Shopify as well. So the company's AWS cloud computing unit was already booming before the pandemic spurred businesses to speed up their digitalization efforts and remote capabilities. And we're likely to see a hybrid work environment going forward for as many companies as are able to do that. Uh, the company is also now the third largest digital advertising player behind Google and Facebook. So another huge growth area that's gonna be even more important going forward as everyone slowly cuts the cord and moves away from these leg legacy media outlets. Uh, Amazon's also expanding its own brick and mortar efforts given that e-commerce, as we just mentioned, still accounts for only a small amount of total US retail sales. The company also continues to rake in money from its prime heavy subscription unit and it aims to compete against Netflix, Spotify, and many others in those various streaming services from music to TV. So Amazon's sales climbed 38% last year uh, in 2020 for its strongest top line growth since 2011. So last year obviously was a big, big year for Amazon and lots of these e-commerce players. Zach's estimates now call for its 2021 sales to jump another 27% higher or adding another $103 billion to reach $489 billion and lift its earnings by 37%. If we look ahead to 2022, we're calling for another 30% bottom line growth and 18% higher sales going all the way up to $577 billion. So it's expected to add another $90 billion to its top line in 2022. So just this the big giant keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger amazon has also crushed our bottom line estimates by an average of 180 percent in the trailing four quarters and its consensus earnings estimates are above where they were before it reported its q1 results uh, all of this helps amazon grab a zach's rank number two buy at the moment along with a grade for growth and we should note that wall street is really really high in the stock so 28 of the 32 brokerage recommendations that zach's has are strong buys with the other four sitting at buys so all of those brokerage recommendations are saying if you're a long-term investor, Amazon is certainly a buy. We should also note that in terms of financial strength, it, uh, it was ranked number third on last year's management top 250 rankings behind only Apple and Microsoft. So this is showing you where the company stands just in terms of its overall financial health as it's just a behemoth and it's growing in key sectors from cloud computing to e-commerce. Uh, the stock's up about 21% in the last year, so this has lagged well behind many other growth names and comes in well behind the market's run of nearly 40%. That said, the stock has popped about 17% since mid-May. It is now approaching overbought RSI levels at about 67, so there could still be a near-term pullback, as we mentioned with all these stocks during the second quarter earnings season. Uh, the stock did hit records in July, and it popped another 1.2% on Monday to about $3,700 per share. And it's trading at about 3.4 times forward sales, which puts it below its own median and at a discount to the S&P 500. It's 4.8 times forward sales and well below Apple's uh, nearly 7 and Microsoft's nearly 12 times forward sales. We should also note that despite trading right near new highs, it's trading well below uh, it's year-long highs in terms of forward 12-month uh, earnings, so trading at about 54 times forward 12-month earnings, which is still high for some people's liking, but it's a growth stock, and it's going to be a growth stock for a very long time. As we can see, it's adding nearly uh, $100 billion this year to its top line. And in terms of the stock itself, uh, Amazon's gone on some stretches over the last five years where it was on a huge run from 2016 all the way up to 2018. Then it kind of moved sideways for over a year. It went on a big post-COVID run, and it's almost moved sideways uh, for the last year until this recent pop. So maybe as it's gone above both its 250-day uh, moving average in the last 
month or so that we could be due for a longer term breakout for Amazon. And if you're a longer term investor, you're considering a, a, a stock that is certainly not going to go out of style given its businesses. Amazon looks like a long term buy, even as CEO Jeff Bezos officially stepped down earlier in July. Uh, it's a great long term buy. Both Shopify and Amazon seem to be worth it, even though their their actual stock price might be a little bit of a sticker shock for some investors. But as we continue to mention, Wall Street might uh, use the second quarter as profit taking, even though we're back up in new highs. Uh, but long term investors shouldn't necessarily try to time the market or stocks as we've seen in the last year. And certainly the last week is a great test case alone since last Monday, everyone was worried we were going to go crashing back down and we're already right back at new highs. So that does it for another episode of Full Court Finance. Until next time, I'm your host, Ben Rains. And remember, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot us an email over at podcast at zax.com. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.